And when they look at your resume, they're going to be so enthralled and they have to call you for the job, right? So Cedron, tell us then, what are the elements of a good resume? So, <laughs> so guys, remember the question earlier, Calico, about whether you have a resume, uh, when last have you uh, updated your resume, if even if you have one, uh, are there any tricks in trade and matches box in business that we need to consider when doing a resume? Now, a lot of people hear the word resume. I, have you ever thought about what it means? Well, a resume is a summary, right? Uh, it's giving you a condensation or a condensed version of who you are, your curriculum vitae, right? Your CV. You ever hear that? Your CV? Yes. Curriculum vitae. That's what that means right and i'm saying that especially in this pandemic or pandemic if you think it is you know the conspiracy uh, conspiracy theorists will tell you it's a pandemic and not a pandemic right uh we have to market ourselves and try to give ourselves the edge at this time so as i said do you have a resume do you even know how to write a resume when last have you updated your resume many people have no idea where to start when it comes to resume writing they either either add too much unnecessary information or they simply don't add enough information if you fall in any of these categories well i've got you covered he is a data scientist by profession and a specialist at resume writing and he's here to give us some helpful tips on how to make our resumes stand out he goes by the hand on twitter that's where i saw him yeah, so no, don't follow I go pick you see it come back again you know it's who you follow who you look out for some other follow be a carelessness idleness dunceness I don't wonder why the life is a girl a spin like gig these are the things he goes by the handle at simply underscore CED simply underscore said on Twitter but for now I'll address him by his government name Mr. Cedron Walters he's my very special guest right here at Miss Kitty Live hello Hello, Cedron. Welcome. How are you? Hello, Miss Kitty. How are you? I'm doing very well. And yourself? I'm doing fine. Uh, thank you for having me. And thank you so much for being on my show today. And let me say good afternoon to everybody in Twitter land. I know that Twitter Twitterverse is a verse by a universe all by itself. So say good afternoon uh, to everybody on Twitter. Uh, but Cedron, I saw a post uh, you made. I came across a post you made uh, regarding uh, resumes, you know. And a lot of people nowadays, especially in the shorthand, shortcut world in which we now live, where we can't even write out, um, you are a uh, spelling y-o-u and then a-r-e it's you the, the letter and r and l-o-l -L, and everything is very informal and people don't know how to say sir or madame or you know even to write a letter them don't know which one to put the address that them don't know a whole heap of things and so uh you know every year there is a cohort of persons who have to send out their resumes we often hear people say nah send out your resume yeah nah send out your resume so i want you to first tell me a little bit about yourself and how you became a whiz at resume writing? Well, I've always been um, from um, being on the Aspen Prison Hall at the University of Hey! <laughs> that was my hall too, honey. Yay! <laughs> I've always been interested in student development um, and particularly what happens after university. And uh, um, during uh, my, my work experience and so on, I've always thought to find what can put me out there or what can um, put me as a cut above the rest. Yes. Um, many persons would assume that when they're writing a resume, a fallback um, assumption is that you are the only resume that persons are looking at. Mm. And for many organizations, some of them are going through hundreds of resumes um, per day. And uh, based on uh, um, some reading I've done, um, within the first about 10, 20 seconds, they know whether or not they want to continue with you. Yes. So imagine if you're writing a race resume um, and you put all sorts of unnecessary things on it and they only have 20 seconds to read, go through your resume and decide whether or not they want to continue with you. Oh. It means oh. that you have to be very concise, very comprehensive and to the point with your resume. Yes. Um, so. I've done extensive research, I've spoken to um, a number of HR personnel and um, specialists. Also in my own experience, um, 
I've, I've done resume for a number of students, um, for a number of young professionals, especially. Yes. Um, and they have received great results. All right. Um, so walk yeah. us now through, and everybody, please get your pens out. Car, I don't want nobody to call me. And look here, I want to make sure to get out to the papers because I want everybody. When you send out your resume, you're gonna be a cut above the rest. And when they look at your resume, they're gonna be so enthralled, and they have to call you for the job, right? So Cedron, tell us then, what are the elements of a good resume? All right. So, firstly, um, just, 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 just picture it. When you look at an event flyer, right, um, you can decide whether or not you want to go to the event or want to know more about the event. Yes. And if there's too much information on the flyer, um, you, you're, you're going to be turned off. True. If there are certain keywords. If you're promoting a party just that one, with that one boom word, um, you want to know the date, the venue, and even the aesthetic of it, mm -hmm. and the quality of the party. Yes. So you have to treat your resume like that. It's your promotional flyer. Um, I like also, that. many persons, they don't understand that there's a different, really big difference between a curriculum variety and a resume. Ah. A resume is really ta tailored to the position you're being assigned for, and it's a shorter, um, and it changes more than a curriculum variety. Curriculum variety has your awards, your scholarships, um, your honors, and if you do publications and if you do consultancy, stuff like that. Oh, um, so those th so those are not supposed to be on your resume? Not necessarily. Unless it re relates to the position, then it's best you keep it off. Because oh. it's going to be in so much detail. Ah. Curriculum variety is in much more detail and it's technically static. So when person has a curriculum by this, there is not much editing you have to do because really it tells the entire life mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. You're adding something to it, right? But as there is a resume, you don't have to put all the positions you've ever held. Um, so if you are going for a banking position, you don't have to tell people that uh, you were um, a janitor. Right? <laughs> okay. Or I was the president of the debate club. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mama put my something in the center. Mama put my things. <laughs> yes. So that's not for the resume. Yes. Yeah, so if you've done great things, yes, but it has nothing to do with um, the position itself. Yeah. You want to kind of contain it. So let's start with perhaps the things that you should remove. Yes. Um, usually, I usually I see some very traditional resumes. Um, but let's start with the things that you should remove from your resume right now. Yes. Things that would facilitate discrimination. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, at the other end um, of the line is a human being, not a system that can pull out information and so on. It's a human being who has their own bias, right? Because um, even even a research coming from the University of West Indies says that person, even your very name, can de determine whether uh, how a person feels about you in terms of hiring you. Your very True. Name, yes. Right? So, Things are removed that facilitate discrimination in your picture. I've seen many resumes with pictures. Oh, so don't put, don't put your picture on your resume. Don't put it on your resume. Unless um, it is an access to what you're doing. For example, if you're a model. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yes, because how you look has to do with um, your job. Yeah, like a TV presenter or something like that. Exactly. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, you can tell it as relates to that. Um, creatives have a bit more flexibility as well as that, but if it has nothing to do with your post, get rid of it. Unless you're doing some drama or something. Um, your date of birth. True. Um, you never put your date of birth on it. No, don't tell them any. Then I need to know that. Oh wow! Really? Yes, people discriminate as an age. Actually, can I say what? Oh, actually, I try to like you see bright. Talk again, yeah. Remove what else? Yes. I never know Remove that. your gender. Remove your gender. Yes, if they want to assume from any that you're female, male or female, that's fine. That's their business. But do not tell them that you're male or female. Right? Wow. Um, yes. So remove your gender. Also, things like this take up space that you don't need to say. Right? Okay. You're, you're, you're focusing on what's more important. I can do the job. Yes. Right? Um, also, your marital status. Don't put that. Do not put, don't put that. Um, okay. Do not put um, your exact address. Mississippi people people put their apartment number on it. Oh, do wow. And also, external fun is really true. People do perhaps discriminate as a address. True. And also, for, 
and also for security purposes. You don't know who's handling your resume or how secure your facilities are in terms of securing your information. So you don't want to any or anybody to know videoing your exact address. Oh my God! And then you can imagine you put all the exact address. You have your picture on it. I you have every father, good and great God. Hey, Cedron, bless you. I didn't even think about that because you automatically think you're sending it to an employer. So these are reputable people. But as you just correctly highlighted, you don't know uh, whose hands your resume may end up in. And then next thing they end up at your door and they're like a stalker person. Exactly. All right, babe. Yeah. Go on top there. So if you're doing it, um, they don't need, as I said, you're focusing on I can do the job. Yes. Right? So I basically, personally, I just put the parish and the country. I live in Kingston, Jamaica. Full stop. Very so well. I don't, I don't need to put Kingston 6, 8, 10. I just put Kingston, Jamaica. You know that I live in the parish, I can come to work. Right? Very well. Um, right? So those are things that you should remove in terms of personal discrimination um, that can facilitate discrimination. But also, I see on resumes, you see hobby. <laughs> no, no, Cedron, what's wrong with Abbey? No, from a band, Abbey, no, I like to read, swim, and watch TV. <laughs> That's nothing to do with the resume. No, oh my God, Cedron, you're going to want me to take out the hobbies? Oh my God. I thought hobbies were like telling you about my little self, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> so take out hobbies. Yes. Oh, what? Why though, Cedron? Why? Because one, it takes up space, and it has nothing to do with the job. Oh. If I'm, for example, if I'm applying to um, NCB, I'm not going there to pay football. They don't even know they have pay football. That has nothing to do with the job, right? That's maybe maybe they want for their inter-office competition. <laughs> yes, when you get there, but they're paying you to be a banker. Yeah. Thoroughly, thoroughly okay. guided. Yes. Okay. So remove hobbies, guys. Guys, I'm quite sure. How many of you knew all of these things that Cedron is telling us? If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Mr. Cedron Walters. He's a data scientist and a specialist in resume writing. He's my very special guest here on Miss Kitty Live this afternoon. I know that many people have graduated. There are many people right now who are going to be looking jobs and your resume is what sells you. Like Cedron said, it's like a party flyer of who you are and it is important that you know how to design your flyer because any place of employment is looking at a hundred flyers at any given time so what will make your flyer stand out over all others thus far he has said we need to remove things like our picture don't put it you need to remove your date of birth these things can be used to discriminate against you don't put your gender don't put your marital status don't put your exact address because you never know who will come into contact with your resume put your parish and the country and that's it and he's saying that remove hobbies okay they, they take up space and unless they have something to do with the job then that's not important uh, did i did i uh, uh summarize that correctly cedron Yes, and I also forgot, forgot one thing it as related to discrimination. Be careful how you put religious affiliation. Ah, okay, right. true. Um, so, so, so because many persons will say, oh, for example, if you're, per se, you're ag against it, and you're not going to work on it. Saturday, right, right away you're dead. Right? Mm -hmm. right, many persons right away, and they, you have not been given the opportunity to state the claim that I can do this job, right? Um, and because persons, after the interview, they'll say, you know what, I'll let them, I'll, I'll, I'll let them go on the, the um, let them keep their staff or so on, um, like that. Yeah. The persons will discriminate as, um, as it relates to that. They don't want certain energies. As I said, we don't know who's looking at the resume and they may have their own bias. Yes. So be careful, <laughs> unless it has something direct, like some leadership position that you enhance, this or something like that. Um, be careful how you, you put it on the resume. Very well. Right? Um, or should I continue? Yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> All right. Um, so also I see a lot of things having personal objectives. Mm -hmm. Right? My objective is to do this in life, do that in life. No, that has nothing to do with our organization. Um, they, have their, they have their own objective for you. They don't need to take that. That's take, that is taking up space. However, mm -hmm. what they can use to replace that is like a short one or two sentences summarizing your professional um, History, like a professional summary. Okay. That, yes, I am Miss Kitty um, with 
extensive um, experience over 10 years in marketing, PR, and broadcasting um, with special interest in this era, that era, that era. Oh, God. Right? So it kind of sums up who you are in one sentence, rather than putting an objective to be a, a serious worker. So on. No, that is wasting space. Okay, right? very well. So what is, what is very crucial as well is how you do your job description, mm -hmm. right? You should stop doing job descriptions. And when I say job descriptions, I mean I was responsible for this, I did that, I did that. It, the, the responsibility stuff. You can be responsible for things and still not enough. True. <laughs> right? What you should try to do under that, um, when it, in, 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 in face of a job description, is impact. Mm. What did you actually do, right? Because organizations are looking for impact. I and you use keyword. I enhanced with this. I managed that. I led this. I improved that. You understand? Yes. Looking at impact, right? So usually, tell a person just use one or two sentences to, de to describe the job itself or what it entails. Then under that, you have a list of your achievements or what you did actually did in the job to improve the, the position. Right. Right. Because. Um, as I said, for example, if you are a lawyer, the same job description is goes for almost all lawyers, mm -hmm. right? But not all lawyers have the same impact. True. Right? So you really want to pull that out. Um, also, try to customize your, your resume according to the job. Not, as I said before, not everything you have to put in there. Um, and also, when you're doing your impact, if you have some figures, use some figures. Say, I improved this by 80%. Yes. Um, I improved follow-up ship, follow-up, I moved it from 3,000 to 10,000, stuff like that. Tell them to the extent of the extent of which you are um, impacted. Yes. Right? And you can also uh, just, just do a quick Google um, using, looking for modern resume um, templates. Try to customize it. As I said, creatives are, um, have a bit more flexibility in how they design their resume. Yes. Um, can that be, be a bit more colorful and so on? For example, a graphic designer, you kind of want to use your resume to say, yeah, we can graphic, the graphic design. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, what, what color should the, the resume, it should be on like a color paper or just keep it simple, clean and white paper? How, how it does that matter at all? Well, you should be careful of the colors you use. Um, um, as I said, creatives have a bit more flexibility, but if you're working on a traditional job, I yes. recommend you um, you stay with very subtle colors, so no neon <laughs> colors. Um, people, are so sending, yeah. people are sending neon resume, um, etc.? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, because I guess they're thinking that's going to make their resume stand out. Yes, but um, it, it perhaps is not best. Some things are a bit more conservative. Yes, depending on the job. Yeah, depending on the job. And because at the end of the day, you just want to highlight um, what exactly you do. So you, you need to look, as I said, I think for Google will do, look at how um, the trends in how people design it. Yes. Also, when you're doing the resume, try to prioritize. Put on the first page, that's the first thing they see, right? You're going to ensure that the first page has your strongest skills and your strongest point. Right? Yes. So, for example, if you don't have much experience, but your strongest point is your education, ensure that that is on the first page. So stick up in. So, so stick up in right there now, Cedron. Should persons list out uh, the subjects that they have? So you know you have some people with eleven subjects, twenty one subjects, twenty three subjects, thirty subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, CSEC, Cape, all of that. Mm -hmm. Should you list out all the subjects, or is that an overkill? Uh, from the moment you get your degree. Stop listing subjects, right? Okay. If you have a degree, do not list subjects. Um, but if you have, a, uh, for example, if the, the highest education is secondary, then you can do that listing um, as it is, as I said, as it relates to the job. Um, but if you have 12 subjects and half of it has nothing to do with the job, you can say including this subject, this subject, this subject, um, just highlighting the subjects that are relevant to the job. Very well. Okay. Right? Um, but as I said, persons I've seen resumes with persons that have, this, have their degrees 
even up to their masters, and I'm seeing that still seeing their PhD subjects on it listed out. Oh wow! Right. And and you're right. saying and you're saying in resume world right now that's a no no. But that's a no no because he, frankly, when you have your degree, PhD and CAPE is really just a step to that. Very well. Right. So if you're highlighting that, that that's not really a highest level of education, right? Ah. Um, and it's going to take up some space that is, um, this is necessary. I want to take up the space, though, Sergeant Matters, subject. I could have put a Batman there. Okay, well, I'm sure it's over. That is true. That is true. I'm just, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I want to put up a turn to subject. I'm Sergeant Matters, I'm going to be for them. Okay. Yeah. This person just wants to use their resume to show off all of these things but they're putting so much on it yeah they don't realize that they're doing it for them and not for the other person at least, who's actually looking on the resume i like and that he has gone through a hundred resumes already and come to yours I like right. that. I like that. Uh, let me let me allow that point to marinate while I take the break. Cedron just said, when we're doing our resumes, we're not doing them for ourselves. We ought to design them and do them with the other person, the, the prospective employer in mind. And so it's not about why you're 30 subjects. Yes, uh, as Cedron said, if that is your highest level of education, then you may want to put them. But after your degree or your master's and so on, then it's a, an overkill to do all of that there. But it's not about you, really. It's about you, but more so about the other person who is on the receiving end. I'm talking this afternoon to my very special guest, Mr. Cedron Walters. He's a data scientist and a specialist in resume writing. I hope that everybody is writing all of these tips down because they are absolutely eye-opening. I did not know a lot of them. And so we're edifying ourselves today as to how to present our best selves. You're listening to Miss Kitty Live on Nationwide 90 FM. <laughs> I wonder if I should put on my resume that I invented la 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 I don't know maybe I don't know I'm gonna ask Cedron what he thinks about it we're inside the R4 and 5 brought to you by Digicel Shake to Win just say Shake to Win with Digicel my very special guest this afternoon Mr. Cedron Walters on Twitter he's at simply underscore said he is the holder of a BSc in actuarial science and let me say an honor student okay let me get that right actuarial science okay and he also has a master's in enterprise risk management he knows all about resumes and he's helping to bring us up to speed as to what obtains now when sending out your resumes i know a lot of people are writing resumes now uh, in a thing and i want you to be a cut above the rest. And so Cedron is giving us all the tips that we need as to how to achieve this. Cedron, good afternoon. Thank you for your patience. You still there? Yes, I am. Very well. All right, so Cedron, we talked about, when we left, we talked about impact um, instead of mm -hmm. job description. Uh, you said yes. take off the hobbies, take them out. Yes. They keep take up space, right? Uh, you also said uh, that you know the resume is about us, but it is more for the employer. So design your resume with your employer in mind. Yeah. Very well. In terms of skills, Cedron, I said don't only sort the thirty subject them. If it is that you have your degree or your masters, if it is that your high school um, level qualifications is your highest, then you may want to do that depending on the job for which you're applying. But when you have your degree and masters and so, you can just leave out the part there, right? Yes. All right, good. Sure. And when it comes now to skills, because there's always that part with skills, like I can use Microsoft, I can use Excel and whatever. Should we still put yes. those things? Yes, you should actually, yes. Oh. Um, and I should say that on the first page, ensure that you list out your skills. Okay. Because that's the first, that's a snapshot of what you're capable of or your areas of expertise. Yeah. So if you're doing, you can list them into, into two categories, the professional skills, as well as your technical skills. Very well. So, yeah, so your professional skills can be, you know, data management, um, journalism, broadcasting, um, records management. People always say filing, but it's actually archiving and records management. That's the fancy name. For Sorry, it. say that again, please, Cedron. People always say filing, but it's actually, the field is actually archiving and records management. Right? Hey, archive, right that down there, there, wait there. Archiving and records management. Hey, records 
manage. We're, we're not putting that. We're not putting that. We're not putting filing. It's archiving and records management. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, okay? Yes, Cedron, we're listening. Yes, um, also people, actually it's also leadership and people, uh, uh, that, that actually many persons can manage but not lead. Ah. Um, so when you use critical um, words in your resume, like I led this and this, that, and you also said I led this organization, I was president of this, that's fine if you, you put that in your resume as well. If it showcases um, other skills that you have, certain soft skills that you have. Yes. Um, if you're good at proposal writing, data analysis, as I said, risk management, um, litigation, list of those professional skills that you have. Yes. And also, you can go to the technical skills that I said, um, in, in terms of, oh, yes, I can I can do Microsoft Office, I can use this tax program, I can use this analytics program, whatever software or accounting program, you, you can list that as well. So okay. The first page. First page. They must not shut out your areas of expertise as well as your technical skills. Yes. Right? As I said, people are looking for tech-savvy people these days, so you can say, yes, we can use a computer. Right, right, right. I'm social media savvy. I know how to post. I know how to, you know, edit. I know how to, yeah. Yeah. And also, the first includes the web browsing. Uh, that's not really a skill in itself, as opposed to um, saying that you have a um, advanced internet search skills or something like that. Okay, right? very well. You are able to use the search, maximize the search engine and find what you want. Mm -hmm. Another skill in itself. Mm -hmm. So just sitting in Google and just try, trying to find something. Gotcha. Right? Research. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so that as it relates to your skills. And I said, put that, on, ensure that is on the first page because that highlights exactly a snapshot of what they are going to see um, with the, in, as it relates to your education and your um and your experience yes so do what do you do do you need to put a cover letter uh, on your resume um tedron uh well i would recommend it um because it also shows how well you write but unless unless it's not required uh if they ask for a resume personally usually put a cover letter on the front um but if it, they ask for a cover letter um uh persons usually write essays and epistles um i recommend that the cover letter um, it don't cast one page. Okay. Right? About oh, say it should be one page. Yeah. And what should be included on this page? What are you saying in your because a lot of times it seems like we're conflating the cover letter and the resume. It's like, you know, okay, I had it over there and I'm putting it in the cover letter. So what exactly should be put in our cover letter? Okay. So I have basically three steps. Use three paragraphs or uh, almost four. But first paragraph, a summary of who you are, right? You can be all, use all the fancy descriptions and results oriented, um, strategic. Um, um, I don't, don't put jovial. Uh, oh, don't put jovial. Oh, they might think you're laughing, laughing, you're giddy, giddy. <laughs> yes. Lach. They have a great interpersonal skill. Say, me like it. Say, God bless you. You won't talk. You say, me like bright man. I don't know. You understand me? I say, you ignore Sedron, man. You go on door. When you say Sedron, don't say Joe. <laughs> don't say Joe. Yes. Say what, sir? I have great interpersonal skills. Interpersonal yes. skills. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So first paragraph, you tell them what you you tell them about yourself. I have, as I said, I am Miss Kitty with ten years experience in this field. Um, special interest in that. I have great interpersonal skills, communication skills, and leadership skills, as demonstrated by this and this and this. As demonstrated by my blood drive, by my show. Ah, you gonna write my resume with the apply to you? I didn't know. You know what? My not in a lie. As God met Moses, said you write it for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anytime Kamala Harris calling for us to party America, y'all write my something. Yeah, yeah, because y'all want to know. Mm -hmm. so, so the first part of asking you who you are, in terms of, as I said, it would be somewhat similar to the professional summary that I said you can use in your resume. Yes. Um, the first part of the is, what can I do for you? That's ah, question. what can I do for you? Right? Yes. You can say, um, in my past institutions, I improved this, managed that. I have a, a lot of processes, all of these things, and you understand? Yes. And lifting up, lifting up. This is what I can do for you. You can improve this, this, and this in your organization, as I have done before. Very well. Mm -hmm. The third paragraph, what can you do for me? So it's not a one-directional thing. Yeah. Right? It's a symbiotic relationship, yeah. 
Exactly, because they want to know that, yes, you can do this work, but why are you really applying to this company, right? And you can have to do your research now. Look at the value, research the company and look at their values and mission statement and all of these things. You can even put back the mission statement in um, the cover letter, say, you know, to, um, they want to be the best business in the world, etc., etc. And you can help them do that. Yes. And, and you want to work some case like that. So you can say, okay, I see this position as something for personal development as well as I can improve it, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So what can they do for you? And they, the values and um, the values and um, principles of the organization align with your your own values and personal values, and et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And the last thing is, you know, it's just a tool um, telling them um, perhaps quickly just saying what your ultimate goal is um, in terms of career path, so they have a sense of where you see yourself, and and just close off and tell them that you um, thank them for for considering your opinion and so on. And right. do do you put in there that um, if any references are um, like if you need any reference, I'll supply them. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do that. Um, if you can, otherwise you may ask the person to put reference and then put. Um, available fund If you're going to put available fund you might as well just take it out and say. Ah, because right. it's like saying reverse back. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you for your references anyway. Yeah. However, I personally recommend person, if, you're, if you do have references, you, you don't have to put their contact on there, but you can list the reference. Very well. And tell the people right. that you put them on there. So if somebody calls them, they don't sound shocked. Yes. But also, um, you can mention your references, even if you don't put their um, number or email there, as I said. So you can ask, it, you can say that, okay, you, if you want their contact, I'll give it to you, but they know who your references are. Very well. If you know the Governor General, if you know Obama, if you know Gigi, if they are your references, and you, you want to boost up the resume and say, I know these people and they can speak for me based on whoever, or your former manager, Right, or the CEO of some company, you can put it on it. You can mention that these are your references. Yes. You will Available upon them. request. Yes, you're asking your contact, the contact. For them. You can give them that they ask. We're talking to. We're talking to Cedra, Cedron Walters this afternoon. I got to tell you, uh, it, this is so eye-opening. We're inside our Digicel Hour, Shake to Win, and we're winning not just with Digicel, but we're winning with our resumes today. It's Miss Kitty Live on a Wire Wednesday. I got to tell you, Cedron is helping us this afternoon navigate through our uh, resume do's and don'ts, all right? Uh, and by the way, too, Cedron, let me just ask you quickly, because I will all, I soon have to sign out right now, uh, even though I'm just so loving this discussion. And thank you again uh, for your time and sharing your expertise with us here on Miss Kitty Live. What about those people who are fresh out of high school? They have no experience. They really have uh, not a lot to put on their resume. What do they do? Well, um, I would say that based on what you've done in school, for example, if you're a part of a club, um, many persons don't realize that what they're actually doing is building certain skills. Yes. Um, so if you were, it's okay if you say, I was the president of this club, and put a job description, right? Um, for example, I was the president of the Present Independent and, um, Cultural Ensemble, which was based on the performing arts, which was performing arts, um, Entity with one person, right? Mm -hmm. And I put it on my resume that I was president, and I listed out what I exact I did. I managed, I led, I improved, etc. And I wasn't paid for it, but it is a job. Yes. Right? Um, so if you're part of clubs, um, if you're involved in a in number of things, put it. You can put it as a work experience. Um, if it adds to, um, if it adds to or is related to the job in terms of what you can do and your skills that you have. Wow. So that's okay. Um, so persons think that it has to be a paid job for them to put it down. No, it doesn't. Because right. There are certain skills that you learn. Um, there are certain skills that you exercise. You can put it there. Very well. Um, Cedron. 
for those persons listening to Miss Kitty Live right now, and as I said, when I'm applying to the UN, I'm going to come hook you. I'm going to come link you up, and you're going to hook me up with a resume. When Kamala Harris calls me, I'm going to call Cedric to write my resume for me. Uh, if persons want to contact you, uh, you know, to help them or to, uh, you know, or pay or whatever it is uh, to get some information, or I don't know if you have something on your Twitter uh, that people can go to, how can we find you? How can we come pay you? for your skill sets to write our resume so that we are a cut above the rest. Right. Um, so you can um, just send me a quick DM on um, IG or um, Twitter. Yes. Um, simply underscore CED, simply said. Yes. Um, and also you can email me. Um, that's fine. Um, Cedronwalters at hotmail.com. Very well, Cedron. Thank you so very much for your insightful uh, tips. I got to tell you, I, we are, I am enlightened and I'm quite sure that many of my viewers and listeners are just as uh, enlightened. And we want to thank you so much for sharing with us this afternoon. I know after uh, hearing all the above, uh, we are going to definitely go and write our resumes. And, you know, it's going to take on a whole nother meaning now uh, that we have your guidance and expertise. And I want to say thank you so much for your time and thanks for being on my show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, Cedron. You're going to hear from us. We're going to call Cedron uh, for uh, some help with the resume. Cedron, have a wonderful afternoon. Do pl Please be safe and take care. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Cedron Walters, data scientist and specialist in resume writing. This is Miss Kitty Live on Nationwide 90 FM. Still inside the hour. Brought to you by Digicel. Shake to win. Just say Digicel, shake to win or shake to win with Digicel.